Pro Group Management. Workers' Comp that works for you. Welcome to Nevada News Megs on the broadcast today. It's an all pundit show with the former Speaker of the Assembly, John Asagura, joins us, Mike Draper, and Amy Tarkanian. They're here for the whole show on an all new Nevada Newsmakers. What do you count on? You count on your power every day. At NV Energy, we've always powered what's important to you, but we're not looking at the past. We're focused on the future. While our standards are high, our rates will remain low. And our commitment to renewables isn't just meeting standards, but leading the way. Because you can count on more than just your power. You can count on the company who brings it to you. That's our promise. You can count on it. Retail's impact on Nevada's economy? Enormous. 8,600 businesses, large and small, employing 145,000 workers. And last fiscal year, retail paid tax on nearly $60 billion in sales. We're the Retail Association of Nevada. We support retail, we help it grow, and we mean business. R-A-N-N-V dot org. Pro Group Management specializes in providing industries with the necessary components to satisfy and exceed workers' comp requirements. Every business has unique needs and specific regulations. Pro Group Management stays ahead of the curve, providing up-to-date services to keep your industry in top form. Discover how we simplify your tasks, improve efficiency, and reduce expense to keep you moving in a positive direction. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. This is Nevada Newsmakers with host Sam Shad, a no-holds-barred political forum. Now, from the Nevada Newsmakers Broadcast Headquarters, here is Sam Shad. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have an all-pundit show going here with a great cast. We are delighted to have John Asagura here. He's the former speaker of the Nevada Assembly, now with Strategies 360. Mike Draper is with Argentum Partners, and Amy Tarkanian is former Nevada Republican State Party Chair. So, Mike, let me start with you, uh, because uh, it's been real interesting with all the discussion about natural gas uh, being blown away uh, by Assemblywoman Cohen. And now we look at Texas and the freezing conditions there and maybe getting rid of natural gas so fast is not such a good idea. What do you think? I think it's a pretty good example of how um, policy can be a catalyst, but when you have a mandate that doesn't match where the market is or what's, uh, what's driven by uh, the economy and innovation and things like that, um, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves. And I don't think the technology is there yet to have uh, mandates where we get rid of any source of energy or, um, you know, those are great goals and aspirations to have, but really these are market-driven uh, uh, policies that, that, will, that should be um, adopted as the market's ready to adopt them. And I'm just not sure, I think it's a great example that the market's just not quite ready to adopt some of the policies that um, that we're trying to mandate. Um, John, you know, uh, the public, I think, is more than happy to go along with carbon neutral uh, or carbon zero projects. Uh, but when you look at what seems to me like an Enron situation in Texas, where the cost of gas um, and fuel period has gone from cents to hundreds of dollars overnight, um, isn't that there gonna be a huge public backlash from Texas, certainly, but other places uh, once they see what can happen um, if you are relying on one fuel only, and in this case, it would be electricity. Um, yeah, I think there will be. Obviously, there's uh, some issues with the reliability of the grid there. Uh, now they're, they're really seeing those come full circle. Um, I agree with uh, Mr. Draper. You know, our natural resources are used in all these technologies, whether you have a wind turbine, a wind turbine with oil in it, right? Like you have all, you know, copper is used in, so you, you know, you have, you have to have mining, you have to have oil, you have to have gas, um, you can't completely eliminate them. Um, and you have to think about those things. So yeah, I think there will be uh, uh, some, some backlash in the policy there in Texas, for sure, especially with the reliability of the grid. But uh, all these natural resources, should we uh, limit their, you know, the extraction or limit the use? Yeah, possibly, but 
Should we uh, be mindful of those effects? Absolutely. Your points are very well made there. Um, in Texas, you know, we're looking at uh, uh, wind turbines that are frozen. Um, so, you know, um, and, and the backups to all of these things are so expensive um, that it makes it, you know, you can buy as much insurance as you want, but there's a certain point where you have more insurance that you're paying for than benefits you could possibly get. Um, Amy, your, your, your thoughts on this, because it just seems like, you know, this was an idea that was kind of wild to begin with here in Nevada um, and, you know, to get rid of natural gas, period. Mm -hmm. Um, and now with what we're seeing in Texas, does this just, this just slow it down completely? Well, they're now talking about this on a national level, not just here in Nevada. And I think it's actually perfect that we have a really poor example, um, unfortunately, in Texas. But I think it's important that most people will view this as it's not okay to um, quickly change um, out of natural gas, out of, um, you know, all of the resources that we've already been using and switching everything to electric and to wind turbines. It's not doable. It's not financially sound. I don't think it's, it's okay to ask everyone to switch from using their gas stoves to an electric stove. Uh, we have so many people that are hurting financially especially because of the pandemic, that now if you're going to ask them to switch all of their appliances out, uh, they're not going to be able to do it. And then on top of that, the electricity will be even more expensive in the end. So now their bills are going to skyrocket even further. So I, I don't think this is okay. I think it's, it's, it's more sound to maybe keep all of the options open and use all the resources in some way or another, but not cut it um, by a certain date. It's, it's not okay for people. Um, so Mike, is this, and you're an expert in public relations, has this just become a public relations nightmare? And to add to that, um, obviously we're seeing that the grid, the grid is independent in Texas, uh, but the grid is hardly stable in the West where we saw California having all kinds of problems with the heat wave last year that ended up coming into Nevada. Well, I, I think, Sam, that it's an example of, uh, from, a, from a messaging standpoint, I think it shows an emphasis uh, on our national uh, energy policy. For the general public, I think this is gonna draw a lot of attention and require a lot of messaging and hopefully provoke a lot of conversations about how we wanna go about our energy policy. If we're going to in incentivize and encourage companies to develop uh, clean energy sources, to upgrade our grid, to uh, continue to develop technology that will allow us to be self-sustainable, things like that, I think that's one thing. But again, I think this is really shows that maybe we've gotten ahead of the technology and that there's, uh, that, that there's always consequences when we make decisions. And in this case, I think we're gonna see costs go up. We see that the, the energy sources might not be as reliable as, as a broad um, uh, arsenal of, of energy choices. And I think that that's gonna show that there's gonna have to be a lot of messaging, uh, particularly by those that are really, really pushing us to mandate uh, green energy um, in order to get out in front of this, because I think the public is going to see the backlash of some of the decisions that we've made recently uh, in higher costs, and already, obviously, they're seeing it in Texas and in unreliability. Uh, John, what are your Democratic uh, Union friends saying to you uh, in terms of this? Uh, do they have concerns as well? Well, yeah, uh, yeah I think they do. Uh, look, there's a, you know, their concern is jobs, right? I mean, so it's jobs, 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 especially in this economy, and so. We, uh, you know, if it's anything that looks to be taking away jobs, then they're going to have concerns. Now, of course, you know, some of these projects do provide jobs, other projects, so you got to balance that out. But I think if it, uh, that if it affects jobs right now, of course, uh, my union friends would be uh, concerned about that. All right, let's take a break. We'll come back much more on Nevada Newsmakers after this timeout. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. Safety. We all think about it. You think about it when he buckles in. 
when you check your mirrors and put away your phone. RTC thinks about safety too. In fact, we create it. Center turn lanes mean fewer blind spots. Bike lanes keep cyclists and you safe. Roundabouts reduce injury collisions, and all these crosswalks are designed to keep families like yours safe. Safety is your priority, and it's ours too. Every day, in everything we do. Because of UMC, there's a wide open road ahead of me. Because of UMC, she can grow up with her twin sister. Because of UMC, I'm here to help you. UMC, the highest level of care in Nevada. The signs and symptoms of cataracts can start out small with subtle changes in your vision. So don't wait. Be proactive and take your vision into your own hands. If you're experiencing the onset of cataracts or just have questions, contact your eye care professional or call Eye Care Associates of Nevada today. Dr. Hiss has years of experience specializing in the surgical correction of eye disorders and has completed over 84,000 vision correcting procedures. At Eye Care Associates of Nevada, we'll change the way you look at the world. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have an all pundit show going with Mike Draper, Amy Tarkanian, and John Osagara. Uh, Mike, um, it's, it's fascinating to watch as um, state governments and local governments try to get kids back into school uh, to see that there is essentially a war going on uh, between the teachers unions, um, the school districts, and the parents. What do you make of this as a dad at this point? Well, first and foremost, as a parent, I mean, there, there's nothing that substitute uh, for my kids being in school. So to start from that place between the, uh, obviously the educational benefits social benefits and all the other th uh, ancillary benefits that come with being in school. There's nothing that substitutes that for that. And obviously there's tough decisions. Uh, clearly I'm also concerned about the health of my kids and, and uh, you know, all the things that go with a pandemic. But I think we're seeing the consequences of our kids not being in school. I think that we have a majority of people and more, majority of businesses are open and people are working. So it's really hard for me as a parent to rationalize in my head why my kids aren't in school. My kids, you know, are allowed to, to go to a restaurant or are allowed to go to the grocery store if I want to take them, but yet they're not allowed to be in school. And I think that that really, really is, is a problem. And I think a lot of people in the public, and again, Sam, from a public relations background, what a hard thing to message. You know, I, I think teachers have done an admirable job through this pandemic with distance learning, but the fact that my kids aren't in school and that, you know, this, a lot of this might be driven by uh, the teachers union or teachers not wanting to be there when everybody else is working is a really hard thing to rationalize in my head. Um, John, um, as the Clark County Education Association tries to push through uh, taxes on the gaming industry to go towards education at the same time that this is going on in so many homes where parents are just distraught about their kids, not only inability to be in the classroom, uh, but for sports and all the other things, graduations, etc. cetera. Um, how tough of a climb is that when you guys are all agreeing that, that the Nevada legislature pays attention to public opinion? Well, I think, uh, look, Sam, I'll go with the same, you know, start with the same thing that Mike did. Look, I've got three kids, um, 11, 9, and 7, you know, four baseball teams, two cheerleading teams. And it's, you know, um, I am fortunate that my kids are able to go to school, but a lot of their friends aren't. And I can see the, the difference in their, um, their attitudes, uh, in their behavior um, at some of the youth sports that we are able to do. Um, it, it, I can't even begin to tell you how important I think it is that these kids be in school. Um, and, and, and I'll tell you, Sam, every person in my family, except for me, I was the only, I was the firefighter. Everyone was a teacher, <laughs> um, you know, aunts, uncles, spouses, they were all teachers. And I think, uh, to, to a person, they would all agree that these kids need to be back in school. 
I get the safety aspect of it. We're getting this vaccine out there. Teachers should be pop on the list to get a vaccine, no matter what, of age, what age they are. The kids aren't the ones that are spreading this. I, I just don't believe that. Um, you know, we've had one or two incidents uh, in our youth sports issues with, uh, with, you know, with positive tests. And those have probably been from people who haven't been doing the right thing outside of youth sports, not at, the, not at youth sports, that have been doing things that they shouldn't have been outside and brought it, uh, brought it in. But yeah, I, I can't emphasize enough how important these kids haven't been in school in a year. Think about that. It's just amazing. Um, Amy, you know, and as I said earlier uh, to Mike, um, it's not just about the education portion of it in terms of being in the classroom, uh, but it's the social aspects. Um, these kids are never going to get this back. No, and it's devastating. Um, the fact that I probably know more families than not whose kids have literally spiraled. Um, and if they have the means, they you know, go and they find therapy. Um, but not everybody has that ability. But uh, the fact that mental health problems are off the charts, uh, depression, suicide rates. Um, in Clark County alone, we saw, you know, the New York Times did a story where we had 18 suicides. The youngest was nine, a nine-year-old. It's unfathomable. And my daughter, who is a senior, I mean, to watch her last year, her sports completely shut down. No friends. Um, now she's a senior. Once again, no sports. Um, no friends, you know, except for the ones that she still holds on to from her freshman and sophomore year. Um, you know, she's trying to go to college. She wants to play basketball. And this is devastating because now for her just to get into a college to play basketball, they have, their seniors are allowed to return. And so there's very little spots available. There's no scholarships available. So the older students are really taking the brunt of this. Um, but, you know, I've seen too, once again, my youngest is in fifth grade. He has friends that are literally um, in a manic depressive state and the parents are just besides themselves. And a lot of personalities have completely changed. A lot of attitudes have completely changed. You know, it's so important to try to still instill hope in these kids and let them know, hey, we're going to get past this because there's so much confusion and sadness. Uh, it's it's really it's it's unreal, and and I feel so badly that these kids are getting the brunt of this. You know, parents obviously are struggling. You know, parents are struggling financially if they've lost their jobs, but parents are also struggling with depression, and it that takes a toll on the entire household. Uh, it's it's very rough. Um, we moved our kids from public to private, and so as of this week, they're all in full time. But there are, you know, a lot of rules. There's a lot of distancing. They still can't interact like you or I did growing up. It's completely different, um, and their friends that are in public school are still sitting at home twiddling their thumbs, or else they're out, you know, maybe causing problems or getting into trouble because they're bored. It's, it's it's a, a totally different situation. Yeah, to say the least, the sooner this gets resolved, the yeah. better. Let's take another break. We'll come right back with this great group after this. Get in on the action at the Tamarack Casino and win your share of $100,000 guaranteed. Now through February 27th, plus five times points every Friday. $100,000 guaranteed at Tamarack Casino. Your good times are at Tamarack. Enjoy exceptional value and a comfortable atmosphere at Reno's newest steakhouse, Nevada Steak. Your good times are at Tamarack Casino. Hey guys, are you watching the game at a friend's or the bargain because you can't watch at home with your wife? Or worse, because she kicked you out and kept your couch, your flat screen, and your kids? What's the one thing a man needs when he loses a good woman? A good lawyer. And when he loses a bad woman, he needs a great lawyer. What makes a good woman a bad woman? You tell me. You're the one that can't watch the game in your own home. I'm men's rights attorney Marilyn York, and I represent men in divorce, custody, and family law matters. Hi, I'm Dave Newman. Remember me? 
I used to be the house detective, and now I'm a realtor, full-time at REMAX Realty Affiliates. And a lot of people ask me, how's the market? You know what? It's fantastic. If you're even kicking around the idea of buying or selling, give me a call. Let's talk about it. Call me at REMAX Realty Affiliates and just ask for the guy who used to be the house detective, Dave Newman. Everyone is talking about opioids, but they're not the only drugs that can be harmful if taken in large quantities or not as prescribed. You also need to be aware of side effects from anxiety drugs, muscle relaxants, sleep aids, and stimulants. Mixing prescription drugs with other drugs or alcohol can be dangerous. If you take an Ambien with a glass of wine, it may be enough to stop you from breathing. Prescribed drugs can be just as dangerous as illegal drugs. Take medications only as directed. This is Nevada Newsmakers. And back on Nevada Newsmakers, we have an all planet show going with a great lineup. Amy Tarkanian is here, the former Nevada Republican State Party Chair. Mike Draper is, is with Argentum Partners. And John Oseguera is the former Speaker of the Nevada Assembly um, and with Strategies 360. John, I've got to ask you, um, you know, with a virtual session, um, as, as a former Speaker, how difficult would it be to run a session like this, does it make it easier, more difficult? What are your thoughts? Well, Sam, uh, look, first, the, the logistical challenge of this for the speaker and other legislative le leaders is very, very daunting to try to figure it out. So I give them credit for um, their efforts to try to make it as accessible as possible. Um, you know, during the special session, it was a little easier. There was maybe, you know, six bills or whatever there was. Uh, to manage that now, you know, in a regular session, we have, you know, 1,500 bills. It makes it really, really, really challenging. Um, the thing that you miss, and I don't know, you know, that interaction with legislators one-on-one -on -one personally, and that, you know, take me as a lobbyist out of it and put the general public that wants to go and talk at the legislature, you don't get that feedback. Um, <laughs> You know, similar to the way we're doing this show, I'll give away a little secret, you know, we're doing it virtually. I can't see Sam right now, so I don't know if he likes what I'm saying or not. He might be going like this, thumbs down. Uh, similarly, at the legislature, you have that problem. You can't see the committee at one time. So those verbal uh, cues that, or I mean, I'm sorry, those uh, physical cues that people would give you, uh, where they are smiling at you or they're like, mm, John, we're not buying what you're giving, you're telling us, um, you're just not getting. So I don't know that you're getting the best policy uh, when we don't have the ability to be in person. And I don't fault the legislators for that, for wanting to be safe um, uh, and not have large group gatherings. I mean, you, you, it's almost virtually impossible if you had a very controversial issue to not have a large group of people show up. So I understand the safety aspect of it, but I don't know that we're getting the absolute best product that we could uh, in this virtual setup. Let me change topics on you, Mike. Um, the, uh, the issue of uh, blockchains uh, wanting to create their own county out of Story County, uh, now the de next development in the story is um, bringing in water uh, from the Black Rock Desert area uh, to their, their project of 67,000 acres. Um, I, I think that uh, a clue would be to talk to Senator Reid about the 30 years it took him to get the, uh, the Tahoe or the Truckee River operating agreement through. Um, this is not going to be a short process. I, I think you're dead on, Sam. I mean, I think when you talk about something in the magnitude of what um, uh, blockchains is is proposing or what has been proposed regarding blockchains and innovation centers um, or innovation zones uh, you you the logistics alone are are huge um, we're talking about water and infrastructure and and in a state that's starved for water and that strapped on infrastructure and so in order to make that happen i think uh, I, I think it's really hard to imagine how that's going to happen in the, the next couple of, or you know anywhere in the near future i do think that the fact that our state continues to put an emphasis though on economic development and realizes how important it is for us to 
uh, incentivize companies or work with companies to attract them to our state and how competitive that environment is. So whether it's tax incentives or tax abatements or innovation zones, the fact that we continue to put forward progressive ideas, I think, uh, I think that's something that we should celebrate. Whether or not it's the right idea, I think that's what needs to be discussed over the next couple of months and certainly will be, but certainly the logistics of something like that are hard to imagine. Yeah, daunting is the word I would use. Amy, um, you know, uh, we've got about 30 seconds here. Uh, incentives and abatements. Um, this governor has not seemed keen on that at all. In fact, uh, the exact opposite. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? Because we wouldn't have Tesla. We wouldn't have so many companies in Nevada uh, that are booming right now if it weren't for these incentives and abatements. Sure. Well, I think this is obviously a different project, and they are actually talking about not having um, abatements, but possibly some incentives. Now, I think they are going to have a struggle, though, with the Story County Commission because they do not want more development. Um, they don't want 15,000 more homes in their backyard. They don't want any homes no, in their backyard. No, they don't. <laughs> they don't. And my husband is commissioner in Douglas County, and they also constantly fight with more homes being built. So in the rurals, they mean it. They don't want more building. And that's where we have to leave it. Mm. Thank you all very much. A great discussion. Really appreciate you all being here. And we will see you very shortly in Carson City. Thanks very much. We'll be right back. Brian Culpa Photography was born in the rolling hills of Massachusetts. And now he can help you experience the stunning beauty of Nevada in a whole new way through the power of flight. Flying has always been a passion for Brian. And at Brian Culpa Photography, he can make your imagination soar. Brian has the creative mind and tools to tell your unique story. Experience the bird's eye view at brianculpaphotography.com. Ah! Hey, Dad? Why are you learning? This place is great. Huh? You gotta try this. This stuff is great! People are gonna love it! Yes. Yes, they were. As you know, Reno is booming. Toll's development company is helping it grow with insightful design and development, building community with every project, adding beauty, adding excitement, emphasizing our shared humanity. Reno is becoming bigger. Toll's development is helping it become better, more livable, more enjoyable. To learn more, go to tollsdevelopment.com. Tollsdevelopment.com. Take a look at Pro Group Management and see how your workers' comp requirements can be met head on. By taking a proactive approach, Pro Group can assure that your company is meeting or exceeding state and federal standards. As you move forward in your industry, Pro Group moves with you, simplifying regulatory tasks, clearing the way so you can get the job done and look to your future success. Pro Group Management, workers' comp that works for you. You can now watch Nevada Newsmakers on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search for Nevada Newsmakers and become a subscriber. We'll see you on the next broadcast. Thanks for watching and listening.